Hey guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoiler-free review of Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This is the first book in a adult science fiction slash fantasy, but more like magic and space series. And this follows our main character of Gideon, and they have been part of the planet of the Ninth for their whole life. They were an orphan, and basically the arch nemesis has been like, for lack of a better term, like the princess of this like area. But one day all the nobles of the different houses, which are basically different planets, I think it's all of the planets in our solar system, but I could be wrong, it's never really confirmed, they get called to basically a gothic space palace in order to become even more enlightened in their necromancy. Oh, because I didn't mention that it's all necromancers. They're all necromancers in space, and Gideon's a lesbian, and there's more lesbians lesbian necromancers in space with a bunch of nobles and necromancers and their guards going to a haunted gothic mansion in space and figuring things out. So because of this Gideon gets recruited as the like princesses basically guard and has to go on this whole adventure and everything goes from there. So first off this book has been like kind of a wild ride for me because I started reading it last year during the great anxiety flare of 2019 if you guys remember and this book triggered my anxiety because of some of the like necromancer uh ghost possession type themes that are in like the later part of this book so I couldn't read it I was like terrified of it. I read it this year properly medicated and in a better place emotionally and was totally fine. There was parts at the end that I kind of skimmed because it was just like really intense but otherwise like was completely okay and enjoyed the story immensely. I started over from the beginning because I had forgotten some of the things that happened so I started over and enjoyed the whole ride. So first off we talk about the world building. Like I said this is magic in space. Space magic. So it's a lot more fantastical than I would say sci-fi, but it's definitely like more of a sci-fi atmosphere. When they get to this gothic haunted palace, basically, they figure out that this is a huge mystery and there's a series of like rooms and laboratories that the original like high necromancers, again for lack of a better term, used back in the day to become what they became. And so that's like all of this like necromantic science that they have to go and like figure out and they're all competing kind of against one another. There's only a certain number of like keys and things to get in places so all of that is very sciencey but the majority of it is death magic. So the ninth is much more like bone magic so Harrow who is the necromancer for the ninth house she is really good very skilled bone magician and then there's some other ones that are good at like soul magic and some are good at like more doctor medical type stuff and they have like all different kinds of of necromancy that they're particularly specialized in and that is really interesting. Next we talk about our characters. So this book is just like snarky and kind of funny at times but it is a particular kind of humor. So Gideon is this like sarcastic very crass kind of person so there are some like I wouldn't call them potty humor because it doesn't really ring like teenage boy humor which is what potty humor is to me. She's just more like crass. She makes a lot of um almost like sexual innuendo type jokes and things like that. So I actually really enjoyed her even though that's not usually my style because it, she really offset some of the creepiness of the story with like her being like what the heck is going on kind of attitude. So really enjoyed Gideon as a character like from the beginning just interesting and great and also like when Gideon gets to the palace a lot of the other women are all like Gideon <laughs> because she's just like buff and like hot apparently and has this like flaming red hair and wears these like aviator sunglasses and stuff so people think she's a babe and so that's really cool. And then her sort of bantery hate to something because I wouldn't quite call it hate to love but there's this developing dynamic between her and Harrow, the necromancer who has been her arch nemesis for years. So they have this dynamic that is very fun to watch, kind of like a slow build, slow burn, like reluctant allies to kind of friends to like something else might be there, that kind of thing. Also all the additional side characters of the different houses and their guards are all really interesting. The dynamic between the cavaliers and the necromancers, which are the names of the guards, is really interesting because they have this like really close bond and then a lot of these people do know each other. The ninth um, haven't really been involved with a lot of the politics but a lot of other people like do know each other so there's all this like intrigue there because they all have like some kind of past, a lot of them, and connections. And stuff and I just really enjoyed some of like the little like politics and, and like the mystery because when we get to the plot like I'll mention right now the first was just these people in like exploring this gothic mansion. About halfway through the book and I want to mention this because I think some people would really enjoy this element it becomes this like murder mystery scenario like clue like people are dying in the 
palace? Is it other people? Is it part of like, is it the nobles killing each other? Is it something in the haunted palace? Like what is happening? So it becomes this like, I think there's a name for this kind of mystery. I want to call it like maybe like locked door or something like they're all stuck there and everyone's like being taken out, you know? So there's that element. So I actually really started to enjoy that. Like I said, I enjoyed the plot, just like the mystery, what's happening, and it was very fast paced and just like interesting and I liked all the dynamics and everything going into it. So I ended up giving this 4.5 out of 5 stars. The very end was a little bit like, I was a little bit discombobulated and like there was some stuff going on that I didn't quite, I feel like, catch or it was just like a little much at the very, very end. But otherwise, completely adored this. I'm not sure if I want to continue. That's the weird thing about this is I'm not, it sort of has a cliffhanger ending, but I don't know if I want to read the second book. I've heard some mixed things about the second book. I mean, this first book even has mixed things that people like love it or hate it kind of thing. But the second, like I just, with what happened in here, I don't know if I want to continue. I don't know if I want to read the rest of the series or not, which is weird because usually if I really love a first book, I want to continue, right? But like, this is so different. I don't know. I don't know if I want to continue. I don't know if I care what happens next. Not because the ending was bad. Just what happened. I'm just like, oh, I don't know. But I will be doing a spoilery gush on this book, so I'll link that on the screen for more of my in-depth thoughts. Mostly on the characters and things like that, but a little bit about like some of the plot at the end. So comment below. Let me know your thoughts on Gideon the Ninth. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.